On the previous episode, I hiked up to one of the most beautiful places, Carnarvon Lake, but came back to a mess in my vehicle, which I decided it's finally time to clean up. But first, some food. I didn't have a good meal yesterday. I was just eating like snacks up on the mountain, so it's time to make some mac and cheese. Okay, so I got another pack of this vegan mac and cheese. I'm gonna be adding uh, bean medley here, and some black olives, some pepper, garlic, and cumin. I'm excited for this. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, that's good. Mmm. Shut the front door. That is delicious. After all that hiking today, that is good. peaceful, very quiet, and just listen to those crickets. Welcome back to David's exhilarating CRV adventures. Pretty nice, I was more or less left alone except for the moths who were insistent on coming in my vehicle. And there's a couple squirrels running about, but yeah, yesterday I just finished off that uh, backpacking trip up uh, Carnar Carnarvon, Carnarvon uh, Lake and that uh, unnamed peak. The north rim, north ridge of uh, Carnarvon um, failed summit attempt so if you haven't seen that check that out. That that was fun. <laughs> Looking at it as I was hiking out you can see the mountain. Those mountains are huge and like I was so high up on the back side of that thing. It kind of sucks but it is what it is. I had to call it. It was too steep. My body is quite sore. A little bit stiff. Um, I'm gonna need some time to recover here but first off on the menu is uh, I got a some cleaning. I'm using a lot of my water right now, so I'm just going to go down and use the river. It's a lot easier to do that. It's got running water. So let's head down there. So anytime I open my back hatch, this curtain, window curtain, falls out. Uh, so we need to kind of refix these. I might do that today. I've been thinking of different ways I can upgrade those car curtains. And I want to make a second part that's kind of version 2. Now if you aren't familiar, version 1 of my car curtains is the most popular uh, uh, video on my channel. It's got like 110,000 views. Basically I came up with those car curtains made of poster boards so it costs like a dollar for each one. Actually you can get a couple of them out of those poster boards. So your entire vehicle it basically costs you about five bucks to make those. All you need is uh, the poster board and some tape. So there's a lot of people who don't have a lot of money who need car um, window curtains and it's you know kind of I guess it's helped out a lot of people. Uh, there's tons and tons of those comments, so I'm really grateful for that. But I want to make version 2 that's even better because I, I've been using mine now for the past two years and there's some of the, like a few of them are starting to fall out. And I've got some ideas. Um, we might be able to use some popsicle sticks or just some different ways of taping it to either be able to give it more longevity or make it better. So I still need to test out a few things before I make that video. Now if we look towards uh, Carnarvon Lake, 
yeah I don't know if it's raining up there if you didn't watch the previous video basically that's the most sketchy and dangerous scramble I've ever done highly exposed there's 20 feet of basically vertical climbing holding onto a chain and the footholds are millimeters they're quite literally millimeters so doing that in the rain would be crazy absolutely crazy so either way I made the right decision by getting out of there when I did because it's probably gonna rain on the hike out there was a group of maybe five or six people going up there yesterday and they would be the only group up there so <laughs> they're probably the only group who didn't look at the weather report regardless of the difficulty it was world-class it was absolutely incredible even to failing the mountain up there was an incredible experience Now that I got my stuff all nice and clean, I'm also reminded I need to buy a new uh, one of these things. Now that I'm back here with all these metal bowls, I typically leave them up to the front, but that's just the thing with van life. When you're driving, because you have all this extra stuff that a typical vehicle doesn't have, you end up with stuff sliding around and things clanging when you're driving and it drives you nuts. So what I do is just go through one by one whatever area is making noise and then try to solve that problem. I don't try to fix all of them at once because then you just kind of go nutty. For example, I fixed the uh, this thing up here. You can see this red thing. So this is a fishing tackle case, but I keep all of my little doodads for all my uh, camera gear in there. So if I need any sort of brackets or um, any sort of thing you could ever imagine is in that. But this thing used to slide around up there. So now I've put it behind the seat here and then what I do is I have this this uh, bungee cable and I attach this to the headrest up there on both sides and that keeps that snug it doesn't it doesn't move anymore my big problem though is this one the bowls for the front of my vehicle here so I usually put them like right here I just try to make some space and jam them there but the two bowls clang within each other and then the spoons clang within the bowls but anything on this surface will just slide up and down up and down as I drive so now is the time I'm going to, I got to clean out some stuff in my, my kitchen drawer that I don't use very often and things that shouldn't be with me. And I'll put that up there in the blue box, my cargo box, and then they'll have room for my bowls. And then I can either layer them with other stuff, like not put the bowls within each other, just some sort of way where they don't clang when I drive. And life when you don't have a cargo box, I highly recommend getting one. I keep so many things up there. Let me show you guys real quick. First off, I'll show you a trick to getting up there because it can be hard to access these things. So to access our cargo box in one easy motion, all we're gonna do is stand here, unlock the box while standing. Then you're gonna look for a footstep. Now mine, I have this one here, which locks into the door. Um, I know every vehicle won't be the same, but hopefully you have some sort of notch or some sort of thing right here you can use your you put your foot on and all we're gonna do is grab the roof rails and then step on this plant the one foot on the the, the door side and then pop up step now the key here is if you're trying to unlock it like this it's a pain but what, what the key is to find your door with your back and lodge it behind it like this it's not the most comfortable but it allows you to go hands-free now so we can reach around, unclip the box, and now we can get in. And the whole time I can reach in, I don't have to worry because I'm leaning back here. We grab the roof rails, and just make sure that your elbow clears this when you're coming down. You don't want to smack it on the corner because it's pretty sharp. But that's it, it's all one easy motion. So now, if you're up here with me, you can look in here. So I've got, this is a bag of tools for fixing stuff camp chair i've got some of that vegan mac and cheese in here i've got a big fan in case it's really hot i'd rather drain all of my power and uh, actually have a fan at night versus just being the sweltering heat i've got some kleenex boxes um so i've got my donut in here i have a full spare that's underneath my uh underneath my vehicle but i've got the donut as well uh, i've also got a hammock here which i want to be using here at some point this is a dry bag uh, for like water crossings that kind of thing 
These are straps and cables. Basically, if I need to tie something down onto my vehicle, this is my um, backpacking bag. So if I want to go for more than two days, I've got that bag. Oh, I got my karate gi back there, which I picked up at my mom's house. That's one of those air beds. You kind of puff them up and you can lay on them. So that pumps up my tires to exact PSI. I did have a lot more extra food up there, but not so much anymore. I've been eating it. So it's just, it's mostly kind of uh, stuff I'm not using all the time, but I want to have with me. So anytime I need more space, I just go into my vehicle and put it up there. I should note too, if you have a solar panel on your box, you look from this side, because it's got so much extra weight on it, it wants to fall down. So it does stay up there, but it's usually only for about 10 minutes before it closes itself. The solution to this is you can take a trekking pole and put it in the box and then extend it so it uh, holds it up. Oh, and I also have a tarp there too, forgot to mention. So if you do a little bit of an audit of my kitchen here, first off, it's, it's a mess. I need to organize this better. Uh, what takes up the most amount of space is this walk I brought. So sometimes in this life, every once in a while, you gotta do a major audit of your stuff. And this takes up so much space. Now I was thinking I could throw it ab above in my cargo box, but if I do that, I'll never use it. So I do wanna be cooking more with this. So what I need to do is find a solution to get it lower. For the rest of this stuff, let's just organize this and we'll see how much space I have. This like pitcher is the perfect size for blending out in the bush here because you can stick like an apple or two and a couple bananas and some whatever. Like it's, it's big enough to be a blender, but it's not small enough that the single cup. Now we've got everything organized here. There, the kitchen's all nicely organized. I'm glad I was able to salvage the the, the wok, the frying pan, so I don't have to put, put it up top. Otherwise, I would never use it. So while the cooking element of van life is new to me, I've been cooking for the past 20 something years, but mostly all of the videos I filmed are focused on the mountains and not on the cooking. So for that reason, I had just only been using jet boil and prioritizing getting mountain footage so I'm gonna try to round this out a bit and show you guys some interesting weird meals that I make I cook a lot of weird stuff um, partly because I like just weird kind of mixtures of foods but taste good I don't like eating weird uh, flavored stuff I like stuff that tastes good but uh, it just and that another element is I've been vegan eight years and sometimes you just gotta kind of you know when you're removing that many ingredients like chicken pork beef turkey um, like I used to love tur turkey burgers and it's like well what do you replace that with um, so then it'd be like well you make bean burgers and like but then bean burgers you can make so many different ways if you use like fava beans they taste a lot different than Romano beans or black eyed peas or um, any sort of other ones white bean kidney bean uh, the red kidney beans taste different than the white ones if you ever had broad beans those are absolutely delicious uh, recently I found some of those at a Chinese grocery store that are fresh and then frozen fresh beans are one of the most delicious foods ever they're just so hard to find because you have to basically grow them yourself unless you can find them in the grocery store frozen which is pretty darn rare so I'll try to include more of this on my channel and the first step is to actually have my wok available so I can cook stuff so now let me show you a simple way of filtering water. So we filled up our Catadon Bee Free uh, three liter bag down by the river over there. And now we got the water tank out and we're just gonna let that gravity drip into there. What's something here about Catadon bags? These filters need to be soaked in water to be functional and they need to be soaked for a while. So this bag here, you can see I've got two of them, right? This bag I hadn't had soaking in water and look how slow the rate of drip is. So this filter is basically kind of useless unless you soak it for a couple days and then you can use it. So I'm going to have to switch it. I'll put all that water in this bag to use because this is going to take 10 hours to drip into there. Dude, after switching it up, look at that. That's much better. So you just let this gravity drip now and it'll, you know, it'll take a little while, but you don't have to do anything. We filter two full bags or six liters. I also have another almost one liter over there. So we'll filter that and we're kind of getting about halfway so while I'm doing all this cleaning and reorganizing why not reorganize my junk drawer so this is my junk drawer this is basically a drawer that just is a catch a catch-all of everything I've got uh, some, some medical bandages and oh, there's like some uh, swimming goggles in here there's a sewing kit I highly recommend everyone doing van life have a sewing kit um, there's extra matches and tensor bandages etc 
um, an extra water bottle. I've got this thing, which is a jackhammer for my muscles. Now you might be wondering, David, you got a jackhammer for what? <laughs> well, let me show you. So after a long hike, like yesterday, I used this thing. All you do is you plug it into the, the power station here. It takes about 300 watts to run it. It's all it is is a reciprocating saw. Uh, there used to be a you know blade at some point, and then they just put these little punchy handles on there, and they converted it. It's it's sold as as this here. I didn't do any changes to it, but technically I could take this off and put a blade in there and have a reciprocating saw, which might be a good idea to have as a backup. But anyways, um, it's just like when you, those stair guns or whatever, but it's more powerful because it's not designed necessarily for muscles, but for <laughs> cutting stuff. So. organize this would you look at that in the process of organizing all this I came across these I bought these specifically to wash my dishes down in the river I'm finding all sorts of stuff that I didn't realize was in there so and look at this I found room for my bowls now we've got my first aid kit um, this is a bear horn these are all um, things for stretching and stuff this too the roller the straps etc the contact solution that I've got my uh, bug spray and my sunscreen and my sewing kit in there extra shoelaces, fire starters, all this kind of stuff. This is my backpacking little case for my toothpaste and my contact case. I just put it all in there. Underneath this here, I've got the, my hatchet, and then this is all my toiletry stuff with my razors and all that kind of stuff. I put them all interlocking. I put the spoons in between, and then in between each of these, I have the rubber glove for washing dishes. And now, you know, it, it shouldn't make any clanging noise. Put that in there. And so I've gone through and I've tackled this monstrosity all this uh, is now nicely organized this is all nicely organized and this one's organized so I've been cleaning and organizing all that stuff now for the past three hours so it's time to hit hit the road here uh, we're in beautiful Kananaskis this place is underrated for sure maybe that's because there's a $94 uh, uh, fee to come you know park anywhere here but let's head up the road I know there's a section of land there that's not technically part of the park but it's in the park it's, the park surrounds it basically so i can put my drone up there and get some cool shots and i think we're going to head into the kananaskis village uh, maybe i can plug in my batteries here and get them all charged up because i'm down to about 45 percent on the one the other one's dead so we're gonna need some power here at some point because my solar is giving me nothing i got another solar panel coming in a folding one i think folding is the way to go it would be nice if there was one on the box that worked and a folding one The vast green forests of the Rocky Mountains are a brief moment in time that comes and goes. Snow hides nature's beauty most of the year, but for a short period nature allows us to bask in her creation millions of years in the making. Cloud, rain, and forest fires gives us an even shorter glimpse into that beauty. Perhaps this is how it should be, a place to enjoy, a place to cherish, a place to protect. Mountains with their timeless majesty offer a poignant reminder of life's insignificance. Towering peaks that have stood for eons dwarf our fleeting troubles. We gaze upon these giants. 
we realize that our problems are but momentary ripples in the vast ocean of existence. The challenges we face, the worries that consume us, all shrink in comparison to the grandeur of these natural wonders. Mountains teach us humility, grounding us in the awareness of our place in the universe. Let us draw strength from the enduring presence, recognizing that life's obstacles are surmountable and our worries, in the grand scheme, are truly insignificant. <laughs>